So strong is the power of this intoxication that the inconsistencies of such theories are not discerned by those intoxicated. Only the few who are gradually getting free from the stupefying potion are able, by divine assistance, to see some of the mistakes all along this line. These see that neither the Church of Rome nor any of her daughter systems is the true Church. Each system professes to be the Bride of Christ, yet each knows that the marriage of the Lamb is to take place at the second coming of Christ. They have, therefore, very generally lost sight of the fact that the true virgin church of Christ, only a little flock, according to Luke chapter 12, verse 32, who will be accounted worthy to become the bride of Christ, must wait for the Lord from heaven. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. She must keep herself unspotted from the world, a virgin that she may be accounted worthy to enter into the joys of her Lord, become his queen and joint heir. It is not to be expected that either the mother or the daughters who are now claiming to reign with Christ, who are now claiming that his kingdom is already set up, who are now claiming that their union with the kingdoms of this world is legitimate, can have the bridegroom's approval. It is not to be expected that they realize their true condition, that they are disloyal to the heavenly bridegroom and king. In the symbolic language of the book of Revelation, as already explained, the name Babylon is applied not only to the typical woman papacy and her mystical daughters, the Protestant denominations, but also to the great city mystic Babylon. The symbol woman more particularly represents the ecclesiastical systems and the symbol city the governmental features, the sacerdotal or religious authority to govern and control the kingdoms, the nations of the earth. We all remember the history of the ancient city of Babylon with its most wonderful walls and its hanging gardens. We all remember that it was built across the river Euphrates, which flowed through its center and was supposed to protect it fully from the hazard of invasion. Besides its vast storehouses of food, it had the river for its water supply. Babylon was therefore considered impregnable, a strongly fortified city. Mystic Babylon, Christendom of our day, is a most masterly organization. Its walls are built of ignorance and superstition, whose great foundations were laid centuries ago. Ancient Babylon's great gates of brass, which came down to the level of the Euphrates, represented mystic Babylon's worldly wisdom, human ingenuity, and dexterity of organization to maintain the control of the symbolic waters and to protect the city from a possible approach from that direction. In the symbolic language of the scriptures, the word water has two distinct interpretations. Number one, water is a symbol for truth. Number two, water also symbolizes revenues from outside peoples and kingdoms. In harmony with this latter thought, we read that the woman with the golden cup sits upon many waters, and the waters which thou sawest are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues from Revelation chapter 17, verses 1 through 15. This woman does not reign over one nation or people alone. Her rule is Catholic or general, for all nations were made more or less drunk with her false doctrines. The water of the river Euphrates flowing through Babylon might therefore be understood to symbolize the peoples and nations supporting mystic Babylon by contributions and offerings. In the Revelation, not merely is the name Babylon used long after the ancient city was blotted out of existence, that for centuries its site was unknown, but the symbolic description includes also the river Euphrates. Of that great river we read, The water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared from Revelation chapter 16, verse 12. If we are correct in our interpretation that the waters of that river signify revenues from all nations, the drying up of the river implies a cessation of the revenues of Babylon, 
a decline in the contributions which heretofore have made her wealthy, millions coming every year from rich and poor of all nations for her support. It is in full accord with this divine prediction of what is yet to come that we hear cries of distress rising from all denominations, both Catholic and Protestant, to the effect that the revenues of the churches are being dried up, and this at a time when the world is larger in population and in wealth than ever before. History tells us that ancient Babylon was captured by Cyrus the Great, and his army after a siege of considerable length, which was unsuccessful until his soldiers digged a fresh channel for the river and turned aside its course. Thus was the river Euphrates dried up, and the Medo-Persian army entered the ancient city suddenly in the night. While these events were occurring, the princes of Babylon, corresponding to the notables of Christendom, were holding high carnival, rejoicing in their security, boasting of the strength of their walls, the impregnability of their gates, and the sureness of their waters. As they were using the golden vessels of the Lord's temple from which to drink their wine, so now, in the hour of mystic Babylon's fall, we may expect something to correspond to this, a spirit of boastfulness, of pride, of intoxication with air, apparently drawn from the divine word. At this moment of their exuberance there appeared in Belshazzar's banquet hall a hand, which wrote the words, Meany, meany, tekel a person. The days of your rule have been numbered by God and are finished. You are weighed in the balances and found wanting. Your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persians. Daniel chapter 5, verses 25 through 28. The strong symbolic language used in respect to mystic Babylon corresponds so well to the prophetic language respecting ancient Babylon that we are warranted in understanding that city to have been a prototype of mystic Babylon, and her fall a prefigure of Christendom's fall. When foretelling the disaster upon Babylon, the prophets of Israel gave to God's people the message, Flee out of Babylon, deliver every man his soul, his life, and terrible descriptions which seem grossly exaggerated unless we view the matter from the standpoint already suggested that the experiences of the ancient city were figurative and prophetic of the much more serious experiences of mystic Babylon, then long future. If further evidence were required to demonstrate that mystic Babylon represents a great nominal system, it is found in the Apocalypse, a part of which is, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. Revelation chapter 18, verse 4. This call must be heard and heeded before the disaster comes, but it will come suddenly as in an hour. Those who do not stand aloof will be involved in the disaster, and it is God's will that they should be involved if, after seeing the truth respecting Babylon and her character, they are not enthusiastically opposed to her deceptions and intoxicating false doctrines. The tribulations upon Babylon will constitute a part of the great tribulation with which this age will terminate and the new dispensation of Messiah's kingdom be ushered in, a time of trouble such as was not since there was a nation. Let God's people remember that loyalty includes action and faithfulness even unto death. Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Matthew chapter 24, verse 21.